Taoiseach, it's been eight months now that this state has been dealing with the threat posed by COVID-19. And we're told, follow the science, rightly told, follow the science. But science is empirical. It's based on data. And I'm concerned with the lack of published data. Because, you know, peer review and transparency are central to any scientific response. I want to focus in particular on data on mental health. Uh, during the first lockdown, the National Clinical Programme for Assess... Uh, sorry, the uh, National Self-Harm Registry in Cork ceased functioning for the duration of that lockdown. It started again at the end of August to collect data both prospectively and retrospectively, but there isn't data, at least at the time of the second lockdown, there wasn't data available in respect to the first. However, we were told that the National Clinical Programme for Assessment and Management of Persons Presenting to Emergency Departments Following Self-Harm, quite a mouthful, it's a programme run by the College of Psychiatrists and the HSE, that they were collecting data throughout the duration of the first lockdown. Now, what I want to know is, where is that data? Has it been collated? Because at the time we were announcing the second lockdown and this stall was voting to facilitate it. Your junior minister, Mary Butler, I was standing exactly where I am now, your junior minister, Mary Butler, said that I'd be provided with that data. And I haven't yet, and I haven't managed to obtain it. Now, that data is publicly, the collection of it is publicly funded. It's a public good, collecting data, this HSE and um, College of Psychiatrists programme. It's in the public interest that it be collected. It's funded by the public, so surely that data should be in the public domain to inform this house, to inform the government on the measures it takes. Because your Thonish yesterday talked about a third lockdown. Taoiseach, I don't think we can go into a third lockdown without, without at least knowing the impact of the first one on mental health. Now, I don't know whether that data is there or not. I'm told it is, but it may not be collated. Now, if it's not collated, it, it's of no benefit because you can't consider the impact of data that hasn't been collated. So will you commit to publishing that data? And there's a broader issue regarding publishing the data and evidence available to NEFIT to ensure that it can be, that it's transparent and that it can be peer reviewed. That's not to undermine NEFIT, but peer review, whether it's the development of a vaccine, whether it's the development of a response, a medical response, or any scientific response, peer review is central. And you can't do that without the transparent publication of data, modelling codes and evidence. Uh, in the future, you could take it that we would do things differently from how we did them even during level five and from the first phase. So we are learning all of the time. On mental health, um, I think it's important to point out, you have made a point, there was at certain points, there's two sources of self-harm figures, the hospitals and clinical programmes. Uh, hospitals couldn't report for a period of time due to COVID. But reporting on statistics continued through the clinical programmes throughout COVID. The data from the clinical programme shows at the moment, and I, I qualify this heavily because I do, I do think we need more data and I need, we need more uh, comprehensive research on this, that there's no evidence of an increase in self-harm as the figures are broadly similar to the same period last year. I put a caveat on that until I uh, am satisfied that there's a full comprehensive analysis of all the data. In relation to suicides, there's a, a time lag as it has to be determined by the coroner However, a real-time local study of suicide incidents in Cork shows no significant increase on 2019 um, figures. And interestingly, a study on suicide in England found no evidence of a large national rise in post-lockdown suicide compared to pre-lockdown lockdown suicide. It's an area that will continue to receive our attention. Yeah. Thank you very much, Taoiseach. Um, I, I greatly welcome your commitment to publishing data, and I note that Ernst & Young have been brought in to crunch data. Like, if that's data that's provided by the state or an organ of the state which is collected with public monies, then that too should be made available. But the most important thing is that, that evidence and the data available to NEFIT and the modelling code, and they do, there is information about the code published, but not enough, I'm told by statisticians, I'm not one, but not enough to run a, 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 a a counter, like to, 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 to do a comparison. But to return to the mental health data, I know what you say there's data there. Will you publish the data that was available to the government in the middle of October? I know you say it's not complete, but what was available and what wasn't? Because I think we need to know this in a democracy. Will you commit to publishing that 
It's not, I'm not asking you to go and get lots of information, just what information was available to the government at the time? Will you publish that by the end of this week, or at least by this day next week? Thank you, Deputy. And secondly, is there any study on the impact uh, of the mental health tribunals? Because they too have been, uh, obviously, we have changed how they operate. Has there been any study into the impact of the change in how they operate on those who are affected, i.e. those who are involuntarily detained? Thank you very much, Taoiseach. Yeah, recently at a Cabinet subcommittee meeting, Minister Mary Butler, for Minister for Mental Health, uh, presented uh, a comprehensive um, uh, report in terms of mental health services generally, but also then in relation to the impact of COVID. Now, generally speaking, services have been maintained uh, at 90-95% throughout the COVID period, which is a great credit to all of the professionals and all of the staff um, involved. And, uh, very significant additional funding has been secured by Minister Butler in terms of the mental health budget. And at that meeting, uh, and I think we subsequently would have briefed you, I think, at a leaders' meeting, uh, leaders' briefing meeting, in respect of the information we had, uh, which, which I'm just, I've given it to you now. I mean, the, the information that had come from the, both the Suicide Prevention uh, Office, which is, is located in Cork. But any data we have, we'll publish and we'll send it to you. I've no difficulty with that. All, all data should be published because it's there to inform public policy and public commentary. So I have no issue with that. But I just wanted to, you asked, you know, when, that, that was the, the, the impact, oh, sorry, that was, that was the presentation made by Minister Butler at that Cabinet subcommittee. Jennifer Karen McNeil, Michael McNamara's contribution today, really highlighting the lack of published data on COVID measures and lockdowns and their um, impact on, on, on mental health. It's a very fair point, is it not? Um, I, he raised a specific point that he's looking for. I mean, I see quite a lot of data. I see a lot of data from the ECDC. I'm tracking that week on week. Um, of course, you want more and better data. And we are, I heard the Taoiseach saying, look, he, we're learning all the time. We're adapting what we're doing. Uh, I think the second lockdown has had an impact on mental health. You, you could, um, but even the approach that the government took to the second lockdown about creating personal bubbles and linking in with another person, particularly if they have mental health difficulties, recognise that experience. But it has been a big part of our lockdown experience. Uh, Harry, you were talking about the, the requirement to, in the context of pubs, wet pubs, uh, you know, learn as we go along, be creative, be able to be nimble. Have we been sufficiently nimble in, in, in the context of those vulnerable people suffering in mental health? Well, mental I, health I, I think it's very hard to make any determination with an absence of data. And some of the data has not been available and some of it hasn't been published. For example, in terms of, of uh, publicans, uh, Ernst & Young was commissioned to do a report and the findings that, of that report have not been published. Michael McNamara uh, was referring to self-harm. He said it hadn't been collated yet. The Taoiseach gave some response saying that there wasn't any evidence so far uh, to suggest that the incidence of self-harm had increased or the incidence of suicide had increased either. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time that that information has been made public. My colleague Paul Cullen in the Irish Times has consistently bemoaned the lack of data in relation to where the virus is originating from. We hear about clusters and we hear about uh, county by county statistics, mm -hmm. but they're not drilling down to a granular level, letting people know exactly where those clusters well, are happening. Now, there has been some information about super spreading events and about yeah. clusters around the country, but that only came very late in the day, at least six months into Last the pandemic. Last word to yourself, Jennifer, on that very point, because we read in the papers today that this government has contracted EY to do just that, to drill down into the figures. Is that the sort of data that's available now? I certainly hope so. I think that what we've learned is that we need more than public health data. We need the data, as Harry is saying, in relation to mental health. We need it on the economy. We need it on the impact on business. You know, it's one thing TDs asking people and getting feedback. It's a totally different thing having actual quantitatively based hard data on which we can base decisions that have to encompass both public health and the economy and a whole range of other things. It's a good thing that we're getting this better data. I hope okay. to see it.